Um, hello, everyone. I'm Kumud Bandari from Rice University, and I'm here to talk about uh, persistent memory allocation. Uh, and, the, and my work is named after uh, the fifth highest mountain in the world uh, called Makalu, which is in Nepal. So uh, the current uh, physical limitations in, uh, in terms of DRAM capacity uh, scaling has led uh, to led me uh, memory manufacturers to focus on uh, alternative memory technology, which are, which are non-volatile in nature. So this next generation byte addressable non-volatile memory combines the byte addressability of DRAM uh, with the uh, persistence provided traditionally by the block storage device. So this means that we can store persistent data in byte addressable format. This next generation NVRAM are expected to coexist alongside DRAM uh, in the future uh, in the same memory bus. And uh, so the, the persistent data is stored in this NVRAM can be accessed using CPU load and store instructions. And uh, to reduce the latency of access to, uh, to persistent data, this data may be uh, cached in volatile caches. So as we would uh, expect, uh, only the data in NVRAM would survive in case of a failure or uh, through power cycle. Data that are a copy of data, persistent data in DRAM or data cached in uh, volatile caches would not survive uh, failure or power cycle. So this uh, poses a bit of a problem, as we'll see in this next example. So imagine that we are trying to store this word ultra-sharp in NVRAM. And uh, through program execution, it finally makes it to cache. And imagine that this uh, word spans a multiple cache line. And some of these uh, cache line would eventually make it to NVRAM uh, due to eviction. And uh, while other cache lines are still in, uh, you know, in volatile structure, a crash happens wiping our cache. And all we end up in uh, NVRAM is trash instead of the word ultra sharp. Clearly not the desired uh, result. So uh, the few takeaways from this example is that uh, um, for, the, for data stored in NVRAM, the persistent data, we may need to apply some of these updates in all or nothing basis with respect to failure. And to, in order to enforce this all or nothing behavior, uh, and to enforce certain ordering of memory updates, we may need to use expensive instructions such as MFNs and cache line pluses. So they are to be used sparingly. Uh, many work, many uh, different work has gone into uh, in building up uh, programming libraries that would enable programmers to exploit this persistence directly. So uh, many of these programming APIs, programming libraries, support uh, the following common um, programming model. They allow explicit allocation and deallocation of persistent memory using uh, familiar uh, allocation interfaces. They allow the programmer to manipulate persistent data in the same format as uh, it is stored, uh, thanks to byte addressable NVRAM. Um, they also provide mechanism to programmers to update uh, persistent data in some fail-safe manner. So they define some kind of failure consistency semantics. So then programmer might write restart code, which enables uh, the program to adjust its programming context and start from the persistent data that, was, uh, that is available after a failure or through power recycle. So it's persist and reuse model. So here are some examples of programming libraries that have been developed in the past and published, uh, that which are mentioned in these slides. So large part of work uh, in the past, which were focused on developing these programming libraries, uh, largely sidestepped a very important um, issue of mem persistent memory allocation. So as a result of which, we don't have a satisfactory persistent memory allocator available today. Uh, most of these programming libraries that I showed earlier uh, ships with uh, uh, default allocator, but the problem is that it lacks interoperability which means that the allocator is only good for the programming library that it ships with. And as a result, um, one can imagine that if you're trying to develop a new programming model or a, a new programming semantics or a new programming library, you have to sit down and uh, may have to write uh, the, pr uh, the allocator also from scratch. One of the reasons why it lacks interoperability is because the, uh, 
the allocator um, logic is very tightly coupled with the failure consistency semantic in order to avoid uh, the allocator metadata from being corrupted by failure and also to avoid leaks that may uh, arise from, uh, from failure. So uh, because uh, this uh, allocation logic is so tightly coupled with program failure consistency semantic, it also imposes restrictions on programming. Which, uh, they may, the programming libraries today may uh, have arbitrary restrictions such as uh, you can only allocate within some fail, failure atomic sections or fail safe part of code and uh, which are clearly not desirable. And also it may have performance implications because if it is so tightly coupled, you know, uh, failure consistency doesn't come for free. As I showed, it involves, as I showed earlier, it involves um, expensive operations. So that is also another limitation. And finally, if programmer makes, an, uh, makes any kind of error in terms of using, uh, or in terms of not honoring these restrictions, uh, you may have a memory leak. And uh, a point to note here is that just like data is persistent, leaks can also be persistent and they can accumulate over time. So this is where uh, our work steps in. Um, so we provide out of the box interoperability with most programming libraries that we have seen. And one of the reasons why we can do this is because we are agnostic to the, uh, you know, uh, to the any failure consistency semantic. Um, and we can, we can be agnostic because we have a built-in uh, failure consistency for our um, internal metadata for the allocator. And uh, we also support unrestricted use of familiar um, C interfaces such as malloc and free throughout the program. Uh, and one of the reasons why we can again do that is because we're detached from the, uh, from the failure consistency semantics of the individual programming library. And uh, finally, we provide a safety net in terms of offline garbage collection and recovery, uh, uh, which, which is effective against all uh, forms of memory leakage including which may arise from a programming error or you know programming programmer not restri uh, honoring some kind of restriction provided by uh, imposed by programming library and uh, we are able to do uh, online allocations and deallocations at a fraction of the cost that the default allocators um, or existing persistent allocators do uh, because we leverage our online allocations and deallocations logic on offline recovery and garbage collection uh, that is, that is in Makalu. Now I will move on to some of the challenges and um, in designing uh, interoperable, uh, standalone interoperable uh, allocator with low overhead for persistent memory. So, f so one of the first challenges, as we can imagine, is that is keeping the, per the internal metadata of an allocator consistent with uh, when when a failure occurs. So here is an example of uh, two. Heap blocks being uh, being merged to form a larger contiguous block. Right now, the two heap blocks are being uh, tracked by two set of metadata. So, uh, merge involves multiple uh, persistent um, writes, as we can imagine. And imagine that in the middle of the merge, which uh, after which we would only need one set of metadata to track one contiguous block, a uh, failure occurs. So one inconsistent state that may arise is that, you know, we had updated the first uh, metadata to uh, reflect the, the merged block, and before we could update the second metadata, crash occurred, and now we have just created 32 bytes of memory out of thin air. So this is something that we don't want. Consistent update would have been where we had nullified the second uh, metadata that is not long, no longer needed. So our approach is, um, is to have a built-in log-based mechanism for fail-safe update of uh, internal metadata, and we discuss the details of which um, in in the paper. This, uh, even when sa one safeguards all the internal metadata, the inconsistencies may arrive, uh, arise at the interface of uh, user programs and the allocator. So these we will classify these as external inconsi inconsistencies. So in, uh, this example will make uh, make it clear uh, what inc internal external inconsistencies are. So a pr user program uh, tries to allocate some memory. So it's requesting some memory allocation. The allocator says, sure, no problem. So it allocates a memory and it's 
you know, it's on delivery. Like it's uh, it's trying to hand it over to the user program. And before the user program gets it, a crash happens. And so after the failure, uh, from the persist from the perspective of the persistent allocator, it thinks that it's everything is good. It was already it was already done. Um, updating its internal metadata, things are all good. Uh, from the user program perspective, it, th uh, it thinks that you know maybe the allocator never got around to allocating any memory because it clearly doesn't have any record of that memory. It was lost somewhere along, you know, along the interface due to failure. So here's our approach to um, to mitigating this problem of. Uh, having uh, inconsistencies along the interface, meaning, uh, so the, the fundamental question here is how, we, how do we form an allocation consensus where both, of both parties agree what has been allocated and what has not been allocated. So our approach is to use a post-failure recovery time garbage collection, um, and currently it's a mark and sweep garbage collection, parallel mark and sweep garbage collection. And the reason why we are able to do this is because uh, in, in the persistent world, Persistent data is stored in uh, in this generally agreed upon uh, abstraction. Uh, this is something that is uh, that is that we have seen consistent among most programming, uh, almost all programming libraries, and I think it's been standardized. So under this uh, assumption, uh, there are top level roots through which all persistent data, when when a heap is in consistent state, all persistent data is uh, reachable. So, uh, and this is something we need because if we want to restart the program, we, we need the data to be reachable anyway, right? So, we leverage on this uh, on this assumption and this on this abstraction, and uh, our mark and sweep offline starts at this top level root and find all the reachable objects and whatever is not reachable, we reclaim it so that we uh, form that allocation consensus. Now, the third challenge that I'm going to discuss is related to the consistency overhead. So there are, uh, the consistency overhead involved with allocating uh, data in persistent world can be uh, roughly classified into the online into online consistency overhead, which is what we incur when the user program is running, and the recovery and restart cost, which is offline, you know, when the mutator, when the user program is absent. So there's some, for some sort of uh, inverse relation between them because more we do online, uh, and more we do to keep the data consistent at all time, less needs to be done at recovery or at restart, and vice versa. So the challenge here is to balance those two because we don't want uh, everything to be done offline, and meaning re recovery time being very large, and everything with online, which means that you know program uh, takes uh, extremely long time to run. So our approach on this one is to was to carefully study. Of the different types of metadata that are existent in the allocator, and to classify them as core metadata and auxiliary metadata. So the core metadata is something that uh, cannot be uh, recovered once lost, and uh, auxiliary metadata is something that can be reconstructed, which is very important for the functioning of the allocator. And but uh, but it can be recreated uh, from core metadata, but requires, you know, incur some cost. And core metadata is kept consistent at all times uh, using that log-based approach that we, uh, that I um, briefly mentioned earlier. The auxiliary metadata, what we do is, although it can be recreated every time, we still store, store it in NVRAM, and uh, so, such that it is uh, readily available after a graceful shutdown. And we uh, we only guarantee it to be eventually consistent, meaning that they are consistent at some program points, but they are not always consistent. This helps us amortize the consistency overhead um, over you know n number of updates to this auxiliary metadata, and while at the same time also uh, uh, make it instantly available when you have to restart it. And uh, we recompute it after a failure, you know, at an inopportune places, unopportunate program point. If it crashes, then we uh, uh, recompute it, and uh, the assumption here generally is that you know failure occurs less frequently than a normal uh, normal execution, and so uh, just incur that little cost, little more cost during failure, and have a better online uh, performance. Here is the brief overview of the design, which we discuss uh, in detail in the paper. 
so uh, you all everything shown in yellow is uh, transient, while shown in green is uh, persistent. And uh, the major takeaway from here is that, uh, first of all, there is uh, most of the data structures are uh, transient, um, so that we don't have to uh, incur so much cost of maintaining uh, it in persistent memory. Um, and it's also thread scalable, multi-core scalable, because we have local heap uh, for um, per thread. And uh, most of the free list in, uh, in thread local heap are um, transient. And we discussed why uh, we are able to do so in, uh, in our paper. Uh, we also have a cache, a transient cache of, uh, of persistent metadata in uh, per thread, so that we can look it up fast and we don't have to go to NVRAM for each access. Now, uh, here I show an example of, uh, now I'm going to discuss about uh, the programmability aspect of, of using Makalu. And so I start with a simple uh, a persistent program, you know, a common programming paradigm where some uh, persistent memory is being allocated, um, initialized, uh, and then finally published, uh, meaning that it's being made reachable from some persistent root. So with, uh, with one of the existing programming library, what you see here is a large failure atomic section um, because, uh, you know, in, under this programming library, you cannot uh, separate allocation from publication. With another uh, existing uh, allocator, although it, um, you know, although the phase is smaller, here you have to do a two-step allocation process, which is not the familiar programming paradigm. And with Makalu, you uh, get the original uh, paradigm restored. We we replaced uh, the default allocator in two uh, of the programming libraries that are available today, Atlas and Mnemogeny, and which are, uh, you know, where the suffix def uh, defines the default allocator for, for this uh, programming library. And uh, we calculate the calculated the speed up um, of uh, using Makalu instead of these default allocators uh, with the respective uh, single thread performance of the uh, programming library allocator. And clearly the top two lines are uh, for Makalu and they, it has better speed up than the default allocator. Uh, we explain why this is the case in, uh, in the paper and uh, we also um, compare it with Boehm collector, different versions of Boehm collector where explicit free is enabled, where garbage collection is enabled and uh, you know we had improved the allocation algorithm. We compared it with Horde and another existing standalone uh, persistent allocator. Uh, which is the only one we know so f uh, as far as we know. I mean, this is the only one published. And uh, our performance, uh, Makalu shown by the darker line, is closer to the transient allocator than the persistent allocator. And this is uh, one of the major reason is because the persistent allocator, for every allocation, it has, it incurs a consistency overhead, whereas in Makalu, most of it is to transient free list, so it doesn't incur persistent overhead. Here is, uh, here is the, uh, the bench, uh, for the same benchmark, we also uh, measured the, the uh, failure consistency overhead in terms of number of cache line flushes issued uh, in average from each thread. And we see that Makalu has a lot better performance in terms of lower number than the existing persistent allocator. And again, the reason is because we don't go to NVRAM and do persistent writes every time. And obviously the last uh, result is uh, w you know, it obviously anybody could be curious why, uh, I mean, how much recovery and GC time uh, we are incurring. And uh, here it's shown that uh, the overhead, the offline overhead of, uh, of recovery and GC is a linear overhead. It's not exponential along with the increase in the size of the heap. So in conclusion, I address the memory, uh, persistent memory management aspect of NVRAM. Uh, you know, and we sh I showed that the carefully constructed persistent memory allocator can preserve traditional programming paradigm, achieve allocator performance close to transient allocator, and uh, we believe that garbage collection will play a vital role in uh, precision memory management in the future. Here are my acknowledgments, and thank you, and any questions?